This episode of the After Action Review Podcast is brought to you by Seabag Locker Coffee. Look, gimmicks are gimmicky. Flashy videos, guns, and trucks have nothing to do with good quality coffee. Seabag Locker is all about quality. They care about what goes in your cup and how you start your day. From roast to your cup in as little as four days, that's what coffee's all about. Go to SeabagLockerCoffee.com, use promo code AAR, get 10% off your purchase. Buy quality, not gimmicks. SeabagLockerCoffee.com, use promo code AAR, get 10% off your purchase. We're also brought to you by the Java Can, an all-in-one ruggedized coffee brewing system designed by a green beret so that you can make a fresh cup of coffee anywhere from your backyard to a mountaintop in Afghanistan. The Java Can will brew you and your team a fresh cup of coffee no matter where life takes you. Go to thejavacan.com, use promo code AAR, and get 10% off your purchase. That's thejavacan.com, use promo code AAR, get your 10% off. Live life charged. And now, the After Action Review with Rod Rodriguez. Leadership is one of those qualities that the military is great at fostering. You learn it by example. Either you see what good leadership is and you emulate it, or you see what bad leadership is and you try not to be it. Now, I've had the privilege of leading as both enlisted and as an officer. Now, on both sides of that fence, leadership was challenging. And it changed depending on who I was leading, where I was leading us to, and where I was on my own personal leadership path. Now, there's no right definition of what leadership is, just variations on the same theme, which is great when you think about it because leaders should be approaching problems from different angles, perspectives, and lenses, and they should be developing themselves as leaders. This is why when I heard Bunker Labs was holding one of their leadership summits here in the DC area, I knew I had to do some recording. Now, if you're not familiar with Bunker Labs, they're a nonprofit organization dedicated to helping veterans and active duty members and their spouses start and grow their businesses. There are a lot of organizations, groups, and tribes out there that pretend to do the kind of work that Bunker Labs does, but no one, so far as I've seen, is as legit and hardworking as the people at Bunker Labs. So I wanted to find out what exactly is a Bunker Labs Leadership Summit, and what does leadership mean to them? You're going to hear some mini interviews with some of those Bunker Labs leaders, all of it recorded from the 14th Street Corridor in Washington, D.C. at the amazing Provision Number 14 restaurant. Then you're going to hear an interview with the man who made all of those interviews happen, Bunker Labs Houston's very own Joshua Wathen. Now, Josh is an amazing leader and entrepreneur in his own right. Former U.S. Army Special Forces Sergeant, he's now studying entrepreneurship at the Wolf Center for Entrepreneurship, at the University of Houston, and he's the leader, the city leader, for Bunker Labs Houston. So stick around for Joshua Watton. All right, folks, let's get this thing started with the Leadership Summit, Bunker Lab style, from right here in D.C. My name is Todd Connor, and I'm the CEO of Bunker Labs. We just concluded the first day of a two-day national summit for all of our uh, chapter leaders across the United States in 22 cities, about 90 individuals who are leading the local Bunker Labs chapters and building the community to support military veterans that are starting and growing their own business. So we're 100% focused on entrepreneurship and entrepreneurs and how do we help more people, more veterans start and grow their own business. And, And the folks here are uh, largely volunteer, uh, and, and most of them run their own business, and they're just inspired by the opportunity that they could stand up in their in their city, in their community, and say, "Hey, I'm here to help other veterans do what I've done and start your, and grow your own business." How do you define leadership? You know, as a leader, I really think values matter, and I, it's funny because I, I would have always believed that as like a pithy throwaway statement, like values are important. But I'll tell you, now that I run an organization with 90 people in 22 different cities. It's like every time we get it wrong, it's because somebody didn't follow the values. Every time we get it right, it's because people live the values. And so what I look for is people that have strong value systems, 
and that can adhere to our values. Every organization needs to have an understanding of its values. It's like a family. Every family has different values. Every organization has different values. But the, the question is, do you know what they are? And then do you have the people in your organization that hold those values? Uh, and it's not wrong if they don't hold your values. It doesn't make them bad people. It doesn't make them valueless people. It just means that they have different values. For us as an organization, we're looking for energetic, dynamic, uh, loving, kind, entrepreneurially minded people that can get it done. And, and those are the values that we hold as an organization. That's what we look for. You're, you have the leadership summit here. What is it that you want the leaders who are attending here? What do you want them to walk away with? You've got to live and breathe and understand the values of this organization. That's number one. Number two is you got to make a best friend over these next two days. And I mean that. I mean like somebody that you, after these two days, you are texting, that you know their kids' names, that you know that they can call you with a personal crisis. Like you, you can't be here if you don't have friends here. And I, and I actually want a best friend. I have several best friends in this community and it's, it's such a privilege for me. And I, I don't know how you do work. I don't understand an organization where you don't feel like you know, ride or die with the people that you're working with. I just, I just don't get that. I, I've done it. I've, I've been in corporate roles where that's not there, and it's to me, it's painful. That's why I love being in the Navy. That's why I love being a part of Bunker Labs. And then number three is you have to understand what we're doing and, and how we measure success, right? And so we spent a lot of time today talking about what, what does a chapter do? What's our programming model? How do we evaluate performance? And you know, it's just like get really simple and clear. And this is what good looks like. And we're going to hold you accountable, even though you're a volunteer. You know, we have expectations, and uh, we're giving you a budget. And, you know, we want things to happen, so because we know what impact is going to look like for the veteran on the other side, and everyone, that's why everyone's here because they want to have impact. So the community part of this is like super core. So I'm very quick to end meetings early, move people into a social event. Um, tomorrow morning we'll start with a run down the National Mall. You know, if people fail to understand some of the discrete elements of our programming model, that's that I can forgive, but not feeling like you're part of a empowered community that has important work to do is like non-negotiable in my mind. So so that's our primary focus for these two days. And uh, if you're a veteran who's out there or a spouse and you want to start a business, come talk to us. There are many that have done you, done it before you. There's a smart way to do it. There's a dumb way to do it. Do it the smart way. Uh, and we're here to support you. And I'm rooting for every, every person's dreams and their own personal success. My name's Joe Whitty. I was in the Army Reserve, served uh, 10 years, one tour over in Iraq. I'm currently the uh, Regional Executive Director for the Northeast and also heading up sales and marketing for an innovative pump company called Kinetic Storehouse. Fantastic. So tell me about your position. What, what, what is it that you do with Bunker Labs? Sure, absolutely. I mean, it, in essence, um, as uh, you know, we're shifting now, um, heading up the Philadelphia chapter to the region, um, we're out there to uh, inspire veterans to build businesses uh, for those that have already taken the plunge to educate them and uh, really connect them, provide them the resources they need to be successful. What does leadership mean to you? Leadership to me means getting people unified on a common mission and to want to deliver that mission on their own accord without having to be forced to do something. Um, in, in, in my mindset, as an individual, I tend to be a slow learner. Like I was the kid who put my finger in the socket a couple times as a kid. Um, but as I've matured and gotten a little bit wiser, I've realized like how I speak to somebody and how I introduce ideas and 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 how I lead somebody um, has evolved to um, to nurturing, understanding that people come from different places. We all have different gifts and all have something to contribute and how we support them, train them, guide them, and put them in the right position to be successful for the common mission is, is not easy to do, but is an important skill set. Um, it's something that we do at Bunker um, with our current team and also supporting these entrepreneurs that are just starting off and have taken that plunge. And sometimes they're just transitioning too, right? Like they're just getting out of the military. They don't know anybody in the city and they're like, hey, I'm gonna start a business too and they're gonna be self-sustaining. Like that's, that's hard. Um, and so to, to inspire them and help them make mistakes and be direct with them sometimes is part of the role that we take and, and it's part of the leadership process that we, we, we run into also. So when you leave this summit, what do you want to walk away with? Sure. For 
you know, for me, it's it's connections, meeting new people. Um, we're, we're moving in a new direction, and it's a smart direction. Todd's an amazing leader. I, I learned from from Todd Connor, our CEO of Bunker Labs. Sometimes just observing, listening, um, he's, he's helped me be a better leader. Um, but what what I want to take away from this is how can I help the people in my region lead and execute to have a bigger footprint? We always want to stay mission focused, veteran focused, um, to support um, more veterans and veteran spouses, and and um, you know, help the people who are on my team in our region know that I have their back and, and that I'm there to help them get better, not for me to tell them what to do. What are you reading right now? I always read the Bible. Good, yeah, you know, the good book. That's right. Um, and, uh, you know, starting with God's Word is, is, is pretty big. Is uh, the Bible considered a classic? Can we, can we call it a classic? <laughs> I think it's the classic, it's the right? the classic, right? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Um, so sometimes it's not always popular to say, but it is. Um, and, and that's always there for me. Um, I think uh, Traction um, by Gina Wickman is, is a phenomenal business playbook. How could we like, grow and scale and exchange communication? is big, and uh, Confessions uh, of an Economic Hitman is, is my fun book I'm reading right now, which is pretty fascinating. My name is Samicha Hall. I was a Marine from 1993 to 1997. I live in Memphis now. I, I'm the Regional Experience Director for the South for Bumper Labs. So what does that mean? What is the Regional Experience uh, Director for the South? Funny thing is we're all learning as we go. Uh, this is a newly created position for all the regions. Uh, my job right now is to take Ohio, Indiana, Kentucky, Tennessee, Mississippi, Alabama, and Arkansas, and as we have the current chapters in there and grow more chapters, is to ensure that the bumper brand is the same throughout the, the region. Fantastic. And I understand they have these summits every, right, twice a year. Uh, is this your first, your second, your third? This is my first summit. I went to the muster. I've been to a couple of musters now, one in uh, Nashville, one in Chicago. Uh, but this is my first uh, Were you summit. at the D.C. one? I was not. I didn't think you were because I think I would have remembered. I usually always dress like this. So, like, I had a panic attack earlier because it made me wear a T-shirt. Oh, um, yeah, you're it was one very of those different. guys. I am. But I can tell. You, you, so, uh, for, for the people who are listening at home, definitely go check out the stills. you got to check out this man's suit, his haircut, <laughs> the beard. Uh, he's immaculate. He's making me look like a pile of trash. I feel you're making me feel very self-conscious. Right but now. that's kind of what I do in general. I'm just kidding. Um, I'm launching a clothing <laughs> line as well, so that's part of my brand. As Let's well, talk right? about that too. Yeah. So, uh, you're a regional experience man. Uh, you're regional experience director. director. Uh -huh. Experience director. Okay, so you're a regional experience director. This is your first uh, leadership summit. What did you expect out of this before you even got here? Clarity. Um, you know, we've talked a lot about the brand. We've talked a lot about the change, the growth. Uh, the, the, chap the chapter that I ran in Memphis is not even a year old, uh, but Nashville had kind of been tasked with the new version of what Bunker would look like. Um, an anchor city with some subsets around it to really grow the brand and say, okay, we're going we're gonna to take veterans, make them, help them figure out their entrepreneurs, take those figured out entrepreneurs and put them into a position to succeed. Um, connecting the city leaders, connecting the city environments, whatever they needed to be successful. And that was our job. But we wanted to make sure that we did a good job and make sure we were laser focused on what we were trying to do. So that's what I was looking for here. I was looking for clarity to make sure all of us left here with the same idea and the same long-term goals. Are you getting that clarity? What, what are you getting out of this leadership summit so far? Uh, some clarity, some not. You know, it's really, there's, it's a moving, a moving target. Um, I think we're growing as, as, the, as the group grows, we grow as well. Um, there's certain cities that have been doing a killer job and certain cities that want more help. Um, Memphis is one of them. We wanted more help. And so really getting the clarity of being, for me to be able to go back and say, okay, this is what we need in our city leaders. We're able to realize that, you know, utilizing some of the work I do is also with a company called Cultural Index um, and utilizing profiles and data analytics to say, this is the hard wiring of a person that's going to run this city. Let's go get these guys because they'll attract the other, the other entrepreneurs as well. What does leadership mean to you? Uh, service. It means being able to provide something for the people around you, uh, be it your staff, be it your, your uh, clients, your customers, whatever it is, uh, to be in service to something bigger than yourself. Walking out of here, what, do you, what lessons are you taking from this event back to your region? Humility, uh, you know, I, I, I don't know if you know this, but Marines are not known to be hum, uh, humil, humility. I did not know that. People. I know, it's difficult to understand, not. but uh, 
we're not we're not the most uh but really understanding what's going on is bigger than all of us and just really seeing the power of you know i got out of 97 and that my marine corps was my history that was it you know it was not part of my present story for 20 years i just kind of did my job i got my degree i went to AM, did all these crazy things and that was it right and now in the last year and a half like bunkers brought back that life for me that family uh, so humility it's what's taught me that hey being a part of something bigger than myself again and it's been beautiful and amazing Yeah, my name's Kirby Atwell, and um, my military service was the Army. And right now, I own a company called Green Vet Homes, um, which buys, rehabs, and rents properties to homeless veterans through a VA voucher program. And I also own the COO of Bunker Labs. What does the COO of Bunker Labs do? Yeah. So it's, it's the COO role has sort of evolved. Um, but when, when I was hired, um, I think I was the 10th the employee of Bunker Labs. And so um, I came on when they needed a finance person to take over the budget. Um, and so that was my main, uh, my main role. And then also chapter operations. We have 22 chapters throughout the U.S. So we have been in the process since I came on almost a year ago of streamlining chapter operations. And so, um, I was sort of, those were the two main, main aspects that I was in charge of. Tell me, what are you getting out of this experience? For me, it's clarity. Um, that, that's been the, the struggle because the way, the, the way Bunker started is really, you know, Todd came up with a great idea um, and he wanted to grow it throughout the U.S. And so he found just great leaders in individual markets throughout the U.S. and uh, said, here's the mission and, and take it. And you're a great leader, like just put your own, you know, spin on it. Um, but this is the intent is to support veteran entrepreneurs. So when I came on, there was like 12 or 13 chapters and they all kind of had their own flavor, a little bit different. And and so they're all doing great things, but it's very difficult to manage that. Um, so as over the last year or so, um, we've just worked to get clarity and, and you know, a, a system that's, that's defined for every single chapter across the board so we can operate as a, as a large organization. What does leadership mean to you? Leadership is, uh, I, I think, I mean, I heard a, a definition before is it's just p people following you because they want to, not because they have to. Is that how you view leadership? Yeah. At, at least in the sense of business. Yeah, that, that's that's the definition that's resonated. I've heard a lot of definitions over the years, but that's the definition that's resonated with me because, you know, you can get people, like in the military, people followed me. I don't feel like I was that good of a leader. Um, I feel like I've learned a lot more. I have a ton to learn, but I feel like I've learned a lot more since the military. And looking back, they followed me because they had to follow me because of the rank. But uh, truly good leaders are people like Todd who started the bunker and now they've got, you know, 60, 80 people here because they want to be here. A lot of them are volunteers and they just, they, they love the mission, they love the leadership um, and they want to be a part of it. So my name is Jake Tozier. Uh, I spent 15 years in the United States Army. Uh, five years of that enlisted, and uh, 10 years as a CH40, uh, CH-47 Chinook pilot. So uh, warrant officer type. Uh, I am the um, experience director for the Western Region for Bunker Labs currently. So awesome. And tell me about what you're getting out of this experience from the Leadership Summit. What are you taking back to the West Coast? Uh, just structure this time. It's great. Like I've been with this organization for going on two years now. Uh, you know, I came on board at, originally as the, um, the uh, me and another gentleman, Johannes Schoenberg, we launched the Seattle chapter about a year and a half ago. Uh, and that's just been amazing, you know. Uh, but over over the year and a half, just seeing the maturity of the organization grow, uh, it's just been amazing. You know, we went from, I think when, when I started, we had 14 cities, and now we're at 22. We've grown so rapid, and I think when a when an organization grows that fast, it, it, it reaches maximum maximum bandwidth and capabilities of local chapter leaders to 
to do a lot of the work on their own, you know, raising money, raising support, partnerships. Uh, it's just, it gets really difficult. And, and more so when you don't have a, a deep foundation of values and, and um, shared experience and in direction. So it, it's coming in at the right time, you know, th rolling out this new three-year strategy with a, adding that middle level of support uh, with the regional model it just gives those chapter leaders that extra level of support and direction that they need. So perfect timing. What does leadership mean to you? Leadership, leadership means to me is, you know, show, show by example, you know, like I don't ask anything from my city leaders that I wouldn't do myself or I, that I wouldn't be excited to do myself. Uh, you know, and, and I, I always tell my city leaders, like being a bunker lab city leader is, it should, it should never feel like a burden. It should be a symbiotic relationship with whatever you've got going on in life. If that's, uh, if, if you're working for an organization like Seattle, like Microsoft or Amazon, or if you're starting your own business or if you're a business leader or if you're a mentor, it should be a symbiotic relationship. It shouldn't be, feel like a heavy lift. Um, and you should be excited about what you're doing because you're not only you're not only using your expertise, but you're giving back to a community that has a shared experience. Right, right. What are you reading? What right. am I reading right now? Yeah. Well, I'm currently I'm reading. A, I read a lot, so I get kind of uh, uh, excited about books and kind of bored, and I have to like switch over. But right now, I'm reading The Advantage, uh, um, which talks about organizational health is just as important as the tangible, metric-driven uh, stuff of a company. Uh, it's really easy to fix those things. Like you can look at some data sheets and see like, oh, my sales are down because of these reasons, or uh, you know, my marketing is down because of these reasons, and it's in black and white. But the things that are hard to identify within an organization or hard to grow from the start is the organizational health, is those values, those shared values and visions of an organization. Uh, and, and just, you know, the team building, the real team building, when teams get together and they open up to each other and they're vulnerable and they humanize each other. It's not just it's not just Steve in marketing, but you know it's Steve, you know his wife Karen and his kids going through this uh, problem, and like you really understand the struggles and why they're making decisions that they're making, and in that way, you know you feel you feel connected in another level. And I'll tell you what, that's something about Bunker Labs that has always been there and just grown and grown and grown. I think a common a, a common thread I've, I, I've noticed over the years of Bunker Labs, especially at this retreat, is each person involved in Bunker Labs, being involved with Bunker Labs was the easiest decision they've ever made. It was like no brainer, absolutely I want to be involved in this organization. And yeah, it's just an amazing part. That's awesome. Yeah. That's so awesome. Thank you so much for taking time out of this wonderful event to sit down and talk with me about Bunker Labs and Thank you. the West Coast. The West Coast, the best coast. That's what I've heard. I would say I was hashtag HQ2. All right. <laughs> Thank you so much, man. Right, All right. That was the Bunker Labs Leadership Summit. Uh, talk to some wonderful uh, leaders in the Bunker Labs organization right there in the uh, middle of a very busy, very loud restaurant. I think it did a pretty good job of pushing some of that noise to the back and bringing the voice of Bunker Labs to the forefront. I hope you got something out of that, folks. Up next, Joshua Wathen, former Special Forces Sergeant, now entrepreneur, and he's the city leader at Bunker Labs Houston. Ladies and gentlemen, Joshua so you come out of the military, you're a Green Beret, uh, you know, an elite soldier. You come from a, an institution that, that really venerates those types of soldiers. I mean, every young Joe joins the Army. Everybody says, I want to be a Green Beret when I grow up. You leave the Green Berets. You come to the civilian world. What was that adjustment like going from being top of the food chain, creme de la creme, to you're a freshman? Yeah, so I actually should have brought my paper. I, I wrote an introduction paper when I first got into the Wolf Center. And I think, you know, I, I had a really horrible GPA in high school. Absolutely horrible. So I started off in community college in Austin. And I think the best line of that entire paper is my ears drooped as I stared between the bars at my pass. Because it was just a different level of people. Um, and it took, the biggest adjustment for me was not treating everybody I met the same way I treated my team. Those guys had been through multiple selection processes to make sure that they, they're stand-up people. 
for the most part. There are certain skill sets and aptitudes that are taken into account, obviously, but it's the character that selection really is looking for. Um, and I think that really the end of my beginning was getting into the Wolf Center for Entrepreneurship because it was a small 36 person class for 18 months lead team folks that thought outside the box with tons of resources and tons of anonymity when it came to decision making and how you were going to grow it so that that was kind of my point but it took two three years really um kind of circling around and you know as most veterans can relate to you start to get calls of buddies you're on teams with that are no longer with you um and it makes you question whether or not you made the right decision because you know, you, you might have been able to help is, is kind of the natural feeling. And that's not a very logical thing to do, but... It's a very human thing to do. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so, yeah, I think Bunker Labs, more than anything else, is a conduit for folks that don't have the Wolf Center for Entrepreneurship to find that place. Um, or, or Bunker Labs itself could be that place. And I think that helps accelerate transition um, and does it in a very supportive environment that's not nearly as intensive as, say, a Camp Hope or, or some other foundation like that. A lot of uh, entrepreneurs, there's this mentality right now in the world of entrepreneurship that you don't need an education. You just need to go out there and do. Now, coming from an academic background in entrepreneurship, what's your perspective on the, the value placed on a formal education versus go out there and just get your hands dirty? I don't think that your education necessarily needs to be formal, but you need to be educated because execution is everything in a startup, especially, and in a new business. However, you can iterate and execute all day long in the wrong direction. And so a little bit of education and what you're doing at the right time makes a huge difference. But one of the best things about the Wolf Center is they, they, they throw a thousand resources at you to learn from but more importantly almost everything you do is an actionable item you're creating documents you're getting out there pitching you're meeting new people you're learning how to network all of those are execution items on an entrepreneur's list and so that's what we really do at bunker labs is there we provide a bunch of education resources but we're not trying to be the leader in education we source that from the leaders in education and then provide equipment you know whether that's software projects and and tools that you use to manage your business and then from there it's the network it's who you're going to build a relationship with who you're going to find in your sector who's going to be that mentor and that advisor that's going to help you pivot and get up after you fall on your face and probably the most important part is the emotional support because as everybody says entrepreneurship is about failing forward and while that makes total sense it can be very difficult if you don't have a support mechanism so to have other people around that you can charge up when you're on top and they can charge you up when they're on top and you're on the bottom. That is what provides consistency among all of our entrepreneurs. So you're in, uh, you're in college, going through this entrepreneurship program. How do you actually fall into the world of Bunker Labs? I'm not sure I understand kind of what you're asking as far as what's my role and how is that affect? Well, how did you actually end up in Bunker Labs? So you're in college, oh. you're doing the college thing, you're, do, you're going after that degree. Uh, at what point does Bunker Labs uh, pop into your life? Okay, I understand. So when I was in college, uh, a month before I graduated, my old team sergeant called me and said, hey, I've got a contract in Iraq. We're basically liaisoning between the Iraqi Special Forces Command and the NATO and U.S. Special Forces Commands. Um, helping them stand up their special forces school so that our soldiers didn't have to go fight ISIS. Um, obviously, the U.S. has supported those efforts. And <clears throat> I really, I, I took that job because I got to work with some old team members and I got to travel. And I got to learn a lot on a much higher and bureaucratic level than I had on my team experience. And when I came back, I had my wrist looked at because I had had an Iraqi student drop a mortar tube on it. And I really didn't think anything of it while I was over there. It hurt a little bit. So I had an x-ray done and they said, sure enough, you tore a ligament a while ago and we're going to have to do reconstructive surgery. So I had 18 months of workers comp where they were paying me and I couldn't work. So I started volunteering. And coincidentally, I went to my mentor who was assigned to me through the Wolf Center of Entrepreneurship and asked him for other veterans that he knew that how to get involved. And he told me about Kevin Doffing, 
who runs the Lone Star Veterans Association in Texas and was getting ready to start the Bunker Labs Houston chapter. And I went and talked with Kevin and liked him and, you know, ended up getting married a month later. And after that, it's kind of been uh, chasing the ball down the hill and just growing as fast as we can. Um, and I, I really love it. This is this is one of the only places I've found where you go to a business event and everybody's transparent. Um, and everybody, when they say they want to help and offer value, they follow through. And I think that that service mentality can only be harnessed in a better organization. So it's it's a beautiful thing. Being an SF guy, you are a force multiplier by nature. How did that instinct apply to standing up an office for Bunker Labs in Houston? Well, because it's not about the office. It's about the people. So we're like a traveling roadshow. We do events all over town at different co-working spaces, and that's very beneficial because it helps you build more partnerships, more awareness, get more guests, find more entrepreneurs. And that's really the fun part for me is getting to talk to these other entrepreneurs who, like you said, they don't need a formal education, but they need someone who has an education and has the experience to point them in the right direction and give them the right tools at the right time, especially because there's millions of tools you can use for entrepreneurship. And that can really slow you down if you try and absorb it all at once. So having kind of a tour guide within that intellectual space and as well as having a tour guide within the community uh, is, is really what our mission is, and I think that that's just a lot of fun, frankly. Um, I, I find that I have to limit myself to 10 to 15 minutes on a conversation with some of these entrepreneurs, simply the, so I can make myself available and not overstrain myself, because I am a volunteer, and there's only a certain amount that I should be doing, regardless of how much I would like to be doing. Um, and that's really where the force multiplying comes in as well, as you help a few folks out and offer as much value as you can, it comes back tenfold. It always does. And as long as you establish yourself with the strong core values, I think that that our community gets really sticky. And then people just ask, how can I help? And look for direction, um, which is kind of the next level of growth. Are you pursuing your own entrepreneurial endeavor? Yeah. Um, I'm an independent consultant by trade. I do change management and special projects. So basically, in a nutshell, what I do is I go to a company that's implementing a new strategy and I try and find as many problems as I can within that project and then ask them you know prove me wrong and tell me why and if they can't then that's a good problem that I've identified and we start looking at a solution set bring in specific consultants for either industry expertise or project management really whatever the client needs um, the juice that I bring to the table other than the entrepreneurship and connection to build that is really the leadership coaching and team building. Um, that's what I love to do inside of that role in my business is to work with the executives on how this is going and how to address this and how to personally bear the responsibility of sometimes laying off people, sometimes, um, you know, repositioning them. I think good to great is probably the book that I lean on quite a bit. Um, and the adage in there is, getting the right people on the bus, getting the wrong people off the bus, and getting them the right people in the right seats. Um, and so sometimes when new st strategies hit, and especially when you're trying to retain good talent, there's training programs and things like that, which is very similar to what we did in the military. It's what do our um, you know, Afghani correspondents really need to learn. They know how to shoot a gun, but do they know how to communicate on a radio? or? You know, they have mortars and, and they know how to do that, but they need to learn enough math in order to be effective at, and accurate. Uh, so it's really that looking at the whole situation, asking a bunch of questions, identifying the problems that are the most critical, and then coming up with solution sets is, is kind of a consultant's main job. What are some of the challenges that you've, that you've faced in the world of uh, being a consultant? Well, I never worked for a consulting company. So... You know, people walk in and say, well, how are you going to do business consulting if you've never worked for a consulting company? Uh, where's your track record? Where's your reputation? Who's backing you? And so what I've and done... those are all valid questions. Absolutely. Absolutely they are. And, and so setting deadlines, um, setting objectives with timelines and being very clear about, you know, if this doesn't work, this is the... Um, the PACE plan, if you will, in the military, everything gets a PACE plan, which is an acronym for primary, alternate, contingency, and emergency. 
Um, so I think that setting the expectations is huge, but I've also connected with folks that have taught me how to leverage um, other businesses. For instance, very rarely do I go out and knock on doors or send cold emails or cold calls. What I do instead is go through recruiting companies that have um, companies that really are looking for a consultant and it's already there. And a recruiting company and a staffing company, they're looking to fill that. That's how they get paid. So they'll tell you how to write your resume for that particular project in order to win it. And then you're based off of their brand. After that, it's really under-promising and over-delivering, um, like it is with anything. Mm -hmm. And if you can do that and show that you care, show somebody that you care, then they will care about what you know. Um, and I think that that's probably how I've been able to overcome some of those challenges. But I wouldn't have known to do that without reaching out through the network. That's, that's how you get it done, is when you don't know how to do something, you've got to call around and find some people you trust that are going to help you find the person that does know and give you that information for free because somebody helped them. And so they want to return the favor now that they're older and successful. So we're here at WeWork, um, the Bunker Labs Leadership Summit, I believe is just wrapping up now. Yep. This is your first leadership summit with Bunker Labs. Tell me about what were some of the expectations you had coming into this event? I mean, the only expectation I really came with was to meet everybody. Um, other than that, you know, the, the less of an expectation you can have, the better of an experience from my, from my experience, not to use the word twice in one sentence, but it's you okay, know, I'm not checking your grammar. You're dead. Yeah. Um, I think that really, you know, take a, take a mission in Afghanistan, for example, if I have an expectation that everything is going to go according to plan and when it doesn't, and it won't go to according to plan, it never does. You're going to be stressed out. You're going to be judging from a certain lens instead of adapting and looking at the situation at hand uh, as it evolves. So here, my expectations, I don't want to say I had none to make it sound like, you know, there wasn't any value here because that's not the case. I had no expectations simply because I came here as a sponge. Uh, and I think that's the right mentality. If I was in a senior leadership role and had been more involved and, you know, that was my particular role here in this organization, then obviously it would be a little different. But as I'm new and this is my first leadership summit, I think the best thing to do is be humble and listen. That's always good advice for anybody. Be humble and listen. I mean, that's, that's your whole mantra, isn't it? Silent professionals, you go in there, you kind of do your thing and that's right. And I think, you know, the, uh, the public has this, this idea that everybody, every green beret is like Rambo. Um, and it's quite the opposite. We're, we're commonly referred to as warrior diplomats because we go out and make friends. Um, and granted, some of our friends may be warlords and maybe have security companies and, you know, different levels of force that we can then utilize. Um, but ultimately, we do that to save American lives. That's the goal. Um, and, and to do it as a partner, not as a manipulative structure. It's really about being transparent with whoever you're working with. Um, which can get a little sticky in special operations because there's certain things you can't talk about and you can't talk about and you're always getting asked questions, but that's why you have great training so you learn how to deal with that stuff. I encourage people to listen to the uh, the classified version of this podcast. We'll be doing that on... Don't worry about that anyways. So <laughs> you came here, you had no expectations, which is a smart idea. And I think expectation management is something that a lot of business owners, new business owners especially, have a problem with. You prepare and it's hard not to have expectations. It's hard not to know whether something is going wrong and that's normal. Like, you know, the engine's supposed to make that sound. You're fine. Or should I be worried? Am I, is the time to panic? Should I panic? Do I press the panic button now? What's your advice as somebody who's been in high pressure situations, who is coming to events like this with the expectation of not having expectations? I mean, especially for an entrepreneur, the answer is find the person that's been there. If you don't know when to hit the panic button, then you're not getting good enough advice. Um, and if you're freaking out, there's probably a good reason to freak out. And the first thing to do is call somebody that's going to help you or even calm you down a little bit so that you can gain some personal clarity. Um, I mean, my strongest mentor is my wife. She's the one that grounds me. She's the one that gives me perspective. She's the one that tells me the things that I don't want to hear um, with a lot of love. 
uh, and a lot of firmness and that's invaluable. Um, so having people around you and that's, you know, that's a military quality. Um, don't mind calling bullshit on you. Uh, and especially in spec ops, if it's not as rank structured as the regular military, specifically because you only have a few amount of people on your team. And so each one of those members needs to have a voice that is heard. Um, so really it's, it's, yeah, who's in your network that you can call if you don't know, picking up a book is awfully slow. Picking up the phone and finding out what book to pick up is a much better way to go about it. Highly encourage people. If you have questions, listen to this podcast. Um, that's my shameless plug, whatever. So leadership, this is a leadership summit. What does leadership mean to you? Leadership is providing resources to the people that are following you. It's ultimately <clears throat> what defines a good leader is a certain amount of sacrifice. It's, you know, the, everybody says whether we win or fail, it falls on the leader. And while that may be true, I think that the team causes success and the leader can cause failure. I don't really see it ever the other way around because as long as you provide good culture, open communication, and you're willing to bend over backwards for the people that are working for you and with you, then they'll go above and beyond to make sure that they protect you. And, and that's what good leadership is all about. Do you ever feel like, do you ever have a fear of being taken advantage of? Maybe putting all of your effort into somebody or something that's just not going to pay off. Been there, done that several times. Yeah, um, it is what it is, but <clears throat> I can't remember who said it. It, was, it might have even been Mother Teresa. It was something along the lines of, uh, when you love everybody and try and help everybody, you will get taken advantage of. Love them anyway. Um, and, you know, that's part of the reason why I'm here in this network, because... We do a pretty good job of making sure there aren't scam artists that come through here. And when they do, you know, you're surrounded by professional people. All of our, most of our volunteers own their own business or businesses and have for some time. Um, you know, and when you get around sophisticated folks that have been there and done that, it's pretty hard to be a con artist. And that's one of the things I try and explain to people about Bunker Labs is that you come here, you're not going to find a master class. You're not going to find a, 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 one of those bring two friends and uh we'll help you with that and they bring two friends oh you mean like a like a pyramid is that what we're talking about some geometric uh, uh business plan and there's the world is full of those the veteran community is becoming infested with these types of individuals because we have uh a lot of a lot of the, re, the a lot of the veterans that are going to the world of business are retirees they have a or medically retired or whatever, but they have sustainable income that's coming in. Uh, it's regular income. And for some of them, it could be even passive income. They have other careers or doing other things. So it's uh, it's scam artist, uh, scam artist central. So I, I, it, it's really cool to hear you talk about Bunker Labs being able to screen those types of situations, those types of people out. Well, as a disclaimer, right, that's that's not our core function, um, but we're very core value driven. And people that don't have the same core values s tend to self-identify in one way or another. So I think that as long as you're surrounded by like-minded folks that have been there and folks like me that have bit on the <laughs> bit on the wrong piece of food and the wrong piece of bait a few times, you know, that's the only way that you're going to get ahead of the curve and learn how to learn how to see it before it happens to you. Um, yeah, and, and really the generosity is there. When somebody says, you know, I want to help you, it's $100 an hour for the first three hours, that's bullshit. That's not help. That's a service that you're paying for. Help is somebody that says, I'm going to give you information or I'm going to give you a connection simply because you're a good person and we're part of the same team. What's your advice for separating a scam from a consultant? Because one could say, well, I'm not really scamming you. I'm consulting. I'm giving you my uh, experience as, I don't know, whatever, you you know, plug in your experience level, whether it's made up or not. I mean, some of those people, one of the, some of those uh, professionals, and I'm using quotations on a microphone, so audience, there's quotations happening. Uh, they make up their experience. Mm -hmm. So how do you separate a consultant from the bullshit? References and due diligence. Um, 
it's the same old stuff. Make sure that somebody old school. If somebody didn't recommend that person and you're going out there, and especially if that person is promising the magic bean and a million dollars and and thirty days or whatever, I mean that stuff is not true. It just doesn't happen. It's not there is no magic to it. It's learning, grinding, learning again, grinding some more. That's really all it is. Um, looking people up. You'd be amazed what you can find when you put somebody's name into Google. Um, you know, if somebody says, yeah, I was a consultant at Deloitte for 10 years, pick up the phone and call Deloitte. Find out. They'll tell you because they don't want somebody representing their brand. I mean, Makes it's sense. really up to you to protect yourself. I mean, we'll help you as much as we can, but there's only so much you can do for another person if they don't want to help themselves. And that's part of what we look for. I want to see somebody that's proactive getting into the community. Um, and if you're not ready for that and you need a different type of veteran service organization, that's okay too. Let's plug you into one of those organizations that helps you get to where you're at a place in your life to be ready to start a business um, or, or take that on because there's no job like running a business. Um, you usually only have one boss as an employee. When you own a business, all your investors are bosses, your customers are bosses, your employees are bosses. You answer to all of them. So it is a sacrificial job. Um, regardless of the credit and the glory, it's, it is about serving others. So on that note, I'm just going to go ahead and shelf my master class. I was going to charge $5,000 a seat, but I'll, I'll keep that down. <laughs> Tell me about a time you've hit a home run. Tell me about a time that you feel like, bam, in the world of business entrepreneurship, or even in the study of entrepreneurship, that was a home run. Um, I think... You know, not necessarily in business, but in personal development, my biggest home run was developing a personal brand presentation around vulnerability. Um, too often, military stories go unheard because they're too painful. And for me, I experienced that for three or four years. And after going through the Wolf Center and learning how to, you know, tool up um, my story and present it, I think that, you know, giving that presentation, I've done it four or five times now. And I'll be doing it on June 28th. And that's my shameless plug. Um, <clears throat> it's it's hard to give my hand shakes when I'm reading off the paper, but once I'm done, it's relieving, and it's the only time I've really been able to get a civilian to get it because it's intense and it, it's real and it's raw and it's okay to do that as long as you set the stage and people let people know what you're getting ready to do, um, and you need to be comfortable with yourself to do that and be in a good environment. Do not go out and blast your story to the public with sensitive stuff because they're going to have opinions. Um, and not a lot of those are going to be good opinions. And there's probably going to be a couple of trolls out there. And so you have to pick your audience and you have to pick your story and make sure that those align. But if you find a group that you can be vulnerable with and actually get your story out and what you've been through, the story is in the struggle. What are you walking away from this leadership summit with? What are you taking back to Houston? Well, they gave me a bunch of free swag, first of all, so I'll be taking that stuff back. Bam swag. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> um, but really, it's a, it's a bigger picture. This was the 30,000-foot view. Where is each chapter going? Where is every region going? What's national doing? What resources are getting put in? Who's the new donors? Who's the new partners? What, you know tools are we adding how many people are we getting into the program i think you know you get lost in your own chapter and so coming here broadens the horizons and really gets you ready to um, not only affect your chapter better uh, and more efficiently but to breed some continuity um, between all of the chapters with brand messaging and um, i think the the event output what we actually put together and and how that comes about. And then you get the shared knowledge too. We've gone around the room several times over the last three days um, asking each chapter and each individual region about lessons learned and questions they have. Um, and that's what it's about, right? That's what we've been talking about. The only difference here is we did it all in the same room instead of having to pick up the phone. How are you going to change the veteran entrepreneurial landscape in Houston? Oh, I think in the next three years in Houston, if you see a good business, you'll assume it's a veteran business. That's the goal. That's awesome. That's a good goal. Yeah, it's a really good goal. What are you reading? <laughs> right now? Um, let's see. I'm listening to Extreme Ownership. Uh, I just finished Keith Ferrazzi's Never Eat Alone. 
Um, I read The Richest Man of Babylon religiously. It's like 140 pages, and it's an awesome little book. Um, and then I've been reading a lot of nonfiction to try and speed up my skill in reading. Um, I was a slow, slow reader about a year ago until I really started getting into it. Um, even through college, I would read my assignments, but never much for pleasure. And since I've gotten into helping other people and looked at the Bunker Labs programming, I've just started to pick up these resources. And yeah, it's it's hard, man, because I'm on it all the time. And so I have a book, two books in my bag right now, Traction, which is what they handed out at this retreat to every volunteer. So I need to pick that up and read it. And I'm almost done with um, Brad Deister's Clarity and Leadership which hasn't hit the shelves yet, but it's a program uh, and tool that we're using in the Wolf Center um, where I teach now, uh, same place I graduated. And I think that spoke really highly to what this summit was about as well, was bringing clarity to the mission that's overarching rather than the entrepreneurial missions of each independent chapter. So we all got on the same page. Um, (laughs) No pun intended. I like it. That was good. (laughs) (laughs) What do you want people to know about Bunker Labs? That we don't want anything from you. We just want to help. I think, you know, there's tons of accelerator and incubator programs out there that charge or take equity or whatever. Bunker Labs isn't one of them. Now, if that's the right fit for you, I most certainly can connect you. Um, But that this is a place for you to go to even find out if you want to be an entrepreneurship. We focus on the zero to one step, that breaking the initial inertia and creating a little bit of momentum and learning and really getting some dirt underneath your fingernails to help you get started. Uh, And that dirt consists of education and connections. Fantastic. Any parting shots for anybody that's probably sitting there, maybe in the gym, they're working out, they're listening to this, they're thinking, man, I have an idea for a business I'm going to do, but I don't know if I can, maybe I shouldn't. What's your advice to those folks? So find a local chapter. If there's one in your area and we've got 23 around the nation, go to an event. We heal bunker brews once a month, which are social events for that specific reason so that you can get into the veteran and civilian network within your town. Um, and then sign up for our Launch Lab online program. That is our online education platform. It's totally free. It's got tons of resources, and you'll get plugged into the Facebook community group and other tools like that and tell people about your idea in that group. Too often I find people that have not started a business yet, and they're very, very worried about speaking about it because they think someone will steal your idea. That's a huge one. <clears throat> well, I think that there's more risk of your idea never coming to fruition because never nobody ever heard about it than somebody actually stealing it before you can get it up and running. Um, and, and like I said, be careful who you blast it to. But in a circle like this, in our group, you're not going to have that issue. That's awesome. Josh, thank you so much for taking time out of your very busy day, taking time out of the summit to sit down and talk with me about your experience and everything that's going down in Houston. If somebody wants to get hold of you, if somebody wants to talk to you personally, uh, how do they do that? Well, LinkedIn is your friend. Um, so Joshua Wathen on LinkedIn is definitely one of the best ways. But my email is also joshua.wathen, that's W-A-T-H-E-N, at bunkerlabs.org. Um, I'm an open book. Hit me up. And if you're not in my area, hit me up. I'll pass you to the people that are in your area. Um, if you need a veteran service organization that isn't in our lane, that's not entrepreneurship, if you need housing or you need a job or you need mental health assistance. I don't really care. We're partnered with organizations who do that. So at the very, very least, I'm going to be able to hand you a link and a name um, to get you where you need to go. Awesome. And all those links will be in the show notes. So you don't have to, if you were like scrambling around for your pen and paper, which I'm sure you were, don't worry about it. Check out the show notes. Uh, Josh, thanks again. Uh, I really appreciate you, man. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for having me. This has been a blast. Um, No, it's been amazing. I hope to do more of this more often. All right, man. Thanks again. Yeah, absolutely. That was a great episode, folks. Lots of content for you to sift through and one of the most challenging episodes I've had the pleasure of working on. Don't forget to go to seabaglockercoffee.com. Use promo code AAR. Get 10% off your purchase. And the Java Can at thejavacan.com. Use promo code AAR. Get 10% off your purchase. Go to both. Get 20% off. 
all of your stuff. To learn more about Bunker Labs, go to bunkerlabs.org. Folks, if you're serious about starting your business, there is no better place to get started than with Bunker Labs. That's bunkerlabs.org. That does it for me. Episode 50 is right around the corner. We're going to make it memorable, I promise. And I will see you at the next episode.